I mean, if you roll back uh, to last year when we had the open AI drama, you know, the board firing Sam Altman and uh, then open AI adding four new members. And uh, I, I think everyone so far has been just uh, sort of interested in how open AI has evolved since then in the sense that they have, even though they have added independent board members, uh, Microsoft, you know, and now Apple probably would have joined the board. It doesn't make sense. Like when you have vested interests, in the case of Microsoft, they have a 49% stake in OpenAI. And uh, they are the primary cloud provider for OpenAI. How can you do a good job of being an independent board member? And that's where you know the regulatory scrutiny comes into play because the regulators obviously are concerned about how Microsoft bought Inflection AI, even though it wasn't an acquisition, they got they got all the employees of Inflection AI. So, well, that's what it comes down to the optics of it here. Break down for me again what the relationship is now with OpenAI and Apple versus OpenAI and Microsoft. So Microsoft has a 49% stake in OpenAI. They made a $10 billion investment. And so you could argue if you're an investor in a company, you should get a board seat, as is Sequoia and some other private mm -hmm. investors that OpenAI has. Apple, on the other hand, just uh, partnered with OpenAI, which is going to be one of the providers of Gen AI model on their iOS and other uh, devices. And so it's it's more of a customer supplier relationship, if you want to call it that way, that Apple is using OpenAI as a supplier. Why were they getting a board seat? Well, you could argue they could be an independent board member, like Fiji Simo is one of the uh, board members for OpenAI. She's the CEO of Instacart. Now, uh, I, I think that's where the fact that these uh, technologies are so intertwined in terms of AI being deployed on Apple devices, you could argue the independence of the board comes into question. And given how important AI ethics and guardrails and all the things that regulators care about, that everyone cares about, frankly, uh, I, I think the independence of the board was questionable. And uh, these companies decided to proactively not uh, you know, join the board, which I, I think is, is a good for optics. So Microsoft is under scrutiny in Europe and by U.S. regulators into, I guess, their alleged dominance of AI. What's the view on the street about that risk to Microsoft and, I don't know, I guess at some point maybe Apple, I don't know, but certainly Microsoft. I mean, the best way to look at it is these companies require a lot of compute for training their models, whether it's OpenAI, Anthropic, any of the independent Gen AI model providers, they need a lot of compute. Now, in the case of Microsoft, the arrangement is really, uh, you know, full of their interest because OpenAI ends up using Microsoft Compute for training their models. All right, what's, so, what does that mean? What is Compute? So, think of all the NVIDIA GPUs that okay. OpenAI needs, but it's deployed on Microsoft Cloud. So, if I need Compute to train the models, I'm not setting up my data center, Anthropic, OpenAI, they're not setting up data centers. They're using Microsoft data centers to get access to that compute. Wow. And that's where they could have gone to Amazon or Google mm -hmm. to get that compute. The reason they're going to Microsoft is because of the, you know, the stake they have and the board seat. And so if you are OpenAI and Microsoft is sitting in that board, are you really going to pick any of the alternative cloud providers for training your models? No. Probably not. Do you feel like OpenAI will ever go public or be bought by Microsoft? Like, how does that situation play out? I mean, uh, everyone knows there are antitrust concerns around big yeah. tech buying any of these companies. So the acquisition is definitely out of the window. And that's why the way Microsoft got all the employees of Inflection AI, it was a pseudo acquisition. Yeah, you get all like. of the employees, you pay $600 million, and you're not calling it an acquisition. So in the case of OpenAI, obviously that's not going to happen, but they and Microsoft does have a 49% stake. Google bought DeepMind for $600 million. Now they bought it, you know, a few years back, but it just goes to show how 
you know, these companies position themselves for the future and uh, they end up buying uh, a lot of the startups. So I don't see an acquisition on the cards, but my open AI is unique in the sense it's a nonprofit. And then they are looking to build a business out of it. They're, so their structure was sort of uh, very weird to begin with. And, and now they had that board trouble. There, it was a 3% board that fired their CEO. Now they're expanding with independent board members. So I don't think they've got it right still, but at least you know, not having Microsoft and Apple on the board is good in terms of optics. And that's what I can conclude here. On surveillance earlier today, we had a, a London-based hedge fund, which I'd never heard from, uh, heard of, Ruffer. They got about $38 billion in assets under, under management. They have a bearish call on the market. They think it's over overheated, everything's overheated, blah, blah, blah. And that includes AI. Now they're saying they believe AI, now, of course, they've been wrong by their own admission and yeah. they've been trying their peers because the markets have been going up. But the AI call was simply that, yeah, AI is transformed, blah, 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 blah. But we don't even know what the uses are. And yeah, we don't know it. all the money that's being invested in AI. Explain to me what the return on investment is mm -hmm. on that. How do you answer that or deal with that? I mean, we know some tangible use cases right now. One is from a developer co-pilot perspective, AI works. And this thing is getting deployed at every company developers are using co-pilot. Same thing with customer service chatbots. This thing is uh, productivity enhancing. And this is getting deployed. So I think it's hard to argue that there is no tangible use case. But look, the valuations have run up. And there will be a disconnect at some point where valuations are way ahead of reality. Uh, and, and that's where, you know, as an investor, you got to pick your spots. I mean, a TSMC will continue to benefit, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's Apple, or anyone else that needs the latest chips for AI. They will continue to benefit.